and a very warm welcome to this 1.1 session. My name is Els, and for those of you who join us for the first time, let me give you a little bit of a background. We started this project, Oneness, way back in May 2020, and that was in the middle of the pandemic, the lockdown, which was a very stressful time for many people. Several of us working for One Point Consulting are meditating on a regular basis. The meditation we practice is called Raja Yoga. It's the yoga of the mind. And someone suggested at that time, why not to share some of these thoughts and practices with the wider audience? And that was in fact the start of the project. What we do is every fortnight on Fridays at 9 a.m. UK time, we invite an experienced meditator and we ask him or her to share their thoughts about a particular topic, but also to guide us into a short meditation. So far, we have had more than 100 guest speakers from all over the world. All the sessions have been recorded and they are available on YouTube. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Antonella, who joins us from Italy. Antonella has been studying and practicing Raja Yoga meditation for many years. She started her spiritual journey in Japan, where she was studying Oriental languages and cultures. She had at one point a very um, success successful business in the fashion industry in Sardinia, but then she decided to change careers and focus more on spirituality. She has been instrumental in opening meditation centers in several cities in Italy, like Olbia, Milan and Bologna, where she is based now. Antonella has written three books on spirituality and recorded many CDs with meditation commentaries. Antonella, has, um, or Antonella is also a member of the National Coordinating Team in Italy, overseeing activities of all the meditation centers in that country. The topic for today is the courage not to give up when life becomes challenging. So very, very warm welcome to you, Antonella. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here today. So what an important topic, never, never give up. Um, life is always a challenge by its um, very nature. And um, to live in a world like this, actually nowadays, it does require a good deal of courage. Or we could say life is like a roller coaster and um, we just enjoy the ride, we could, we can, learning uh, along the way, or we can choose to rebel and go against life challenges, resenting every moment of, um, of this uh, journey. And uh, in that case, we deprive ourselves from learning and accumulating uh, inner powers, but more, more than everything else, learning to believe in the self. I think uh, the courage to never give up and keep going in spite of many, many challenges is very much connected with um, believing in the self, believing in, uh, in the universe, believing in God. Um, I remember many years ago, the first time I went for a trekking, I was very scared, never done anything like that, but I did believe in the guide and that would make me relax and just enjoying the scene. So as much as I do believe in myself and I believe in whatever I do, then I will get and uh, I will be much more courageous in, uh, in whatever I choose to do, in whatever I choose to be, actually. So how much do I believe in myself is, in, is a question I would ask myself. How much, do I be, how much do you believe in yourself? And um, 
How much do you believe in the choice that you make every day? Anyway, why do we sometimes um, give up rather than have the courage to proceed? I think there can be many, many reasons, like a fear of failing, which is a very strong emotion, or lack of confidence in cooperation of people around myself and cooperation of um, events, or doubts. You know, don't even try, it will never work. Some people can tell you this. And, uh, you know, I will entertain doubts in myself or lack of willpower, lack of clarity about my aim and objective, lack of energy physically and emotionally. So many things can be a block on my way or being stuck in the past. Um, it's so important to um, overcome my story. Like I can say I grew up poor, so that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to always be poor. Or I can say, I grew up poor, but I will change my destiny. Or I was very weak, but I will change my, my destiny. I will change my story. So can I write a new story? It's up to me. A story that I'm in control of. And this requires courage. But it's so fascinating. Courage is actually a, fac a fascinating energy because it allows me to step forward and to open up new horizons. You know, Winston Churchill used to say, when you're going through hell, keep on going, never. Never, never give up. Anyway, courage is made of many arts to bypass all those blocks and uh, weaknesses, like the art of taking risks. You know, when a child learns to walk, if the child, after falling three times, will think that's enough, I've already tried enough, I'm not capable. It would be a mess. So that would be a disaster. Instead, the child falls, gets up, falls again, gets up. It's unstoppable. Somehow he knows he can make it. So where do I find that voice inside myself, in the soul, that will tell me, keep going, you will make it. Keep doing it. It will succeed. It's like um, opening up a, a treasure store inside the self where the voice can be heard and the strength can be restored. I'm sure you know the story of Robert the Bruce uh, hundreds of years ago in Scotland. There was a king called Robert the Bruce. Six times he was defeated by the English army and all his men were scattered and the king was forced to hide in the forest, on the mountain, in a cave. And when he was in the cave, tired and hopeless, he saw a little spider, you know, spider so tiny. And that spider was trying to weave its web. And he watched the spider at work and the spider six times he tried and he failed. He didn't work. And Robert the Bruce thought, gosh, it's like me. <laughs> um, you know, he failed six times on a row. But the spider didn't stop. He didn't lose hope. We even more care. The spider was ready to try again. And so the king was um, fascinated by this uh, tireless uh, work. And uh, would the spider fail again? 
but the spider succeed. So he thought, I too, I will try the seventh time. And he did, and he won. So I think it's good to learn that um, failures are just a stepping stone to go further. And I will try and try until I succeed. And I can enjoy the ups and downs like a roller coaster. Uh, Hubbard used to say there is no failure except in no longer trying. That's the biggest failure. Um, and something very important actually is whenever I fail, if I think I am a failure, that's very wrong. Because there shouldn't be a sense of shame, but rather the courage to try again and keep going. Because, of course, it didn't work, but I'm not a failure. Whatever I say to myself leaves a big impact in my consciousness. So I tried, it didn't work, I will try again, but I'm not a failure. Um, I'm trying and eventually it will work. I will, I will find a way out. Again, it's a way of believing in yourself. When life knock you down, you are always have two choices. Get up and move forward or stay on the ground, you know, and accept defeat. Falling means you have been trying. The reality is that you won't grow if you just hang around in your comfort zone. It's comfort, it's comfortable, but it won't bring you anywhere. True growth requires taking a risk. Put yourself in the line. Um, experience this as a kind of adventure. When I started to meditate, I never did it before, of course. It was my uh, first approach. And I thought it was a kind of an adventure. Let me... See, let me try, um, let me experience something new. The path to an extraordinary life, which we all want, I guess, requires you to do the very thing the others aren't willing to do. So, of course, when we do something new and we keep trying in spite of whatever happened, I need to check one thing. Um, because if I carry on and carry on and it's just a loss, then maybe it was the wrong choice. So I need to check my intention because it's equally an expression of courage to carry on and try again as much as it is an expression of courage to stop and rethink if at the beginning to start with it was a wrong choice then to carry on just because of proud you know because I don't like to go back and rethink maybe that kind of ego will uh, influence my choice but if I realize I've done the wrong choice, it's much more wise and sensible to stop and rethink and start again. That is equally um, courageous. Uh, of course, I will check that it's not out of fear, not out of lack of self-respect, not out of laziness but just because of clarity of having done the wrong choice, which is happening. So it's equally courageous to go as much as to withdraw. It depends on the situation. In fact, acceptance, real acceptance, doesn't mean that you are giving up. It means that you are surrendering to what it is. And you make room and space for what you will be. 
then you will have a great sense of control over your emotion and your life, which I think is so essential. Um, Marcus Aurelius used to say, what stands in the way becomes the way. So the art of taking risk, it's an important art to become more courageous. And another art is the art of saying yes to challenges. Um, I remember many, many years ago, I was at the beginning of this, uh, you know, experience with the Brahma Kumaris in this school. And uh, I was probably nine months in this uh, path. And there was an event just outside the Vatican. It was an interfaith event. And it was so crowded, all experienced people within, you know, different beliefs and religions. And I was asked to lead a meditation commentary. I was very young, very totally unexperienced. And here they were asking me to lead the meditation. And I thought, gosh, I would like to die now rather than do it. So I tried all my best to escape it. Um, and it, I didn't succeed. I had to do it. So I had to surrender and say yes to that challenge. And so I went on the stage, really frightened. And I said, okay, something will happen. I will have to do it. So I sat and I just, uh, I just thought, let me become so silent. And if I can be silent in my mind, I can allow God to inspire me. And then it's like whenever a challenge occurs, it never occurs by chance. It's because in some way you are ready to face it, to go for it. And it went very well. And um, halfway through watching the public while I was speaking the commentary, I eventually saw the Dalai Lama seated in the first row. So for a second, I got again frightened. But, uh, you know, the silence that um, was within my mind was stronger. And so there is a space inside where all our resources are stored. And silence is really the best energy to lead me to that space where courage is available, willpower is available. Uh, any qualities is available right there inside yourself. And that moment gave me the, the feeling that uh, really sometimes fear is, is so false. It's something that we fall inside, you know, we fall in, in that kind of feeling, but it's not real. The reality is my courage and the false is that fear and the taste of uh, having overcome that fear is so important it builds up confidence and not just that there is i think a little secret if you say yes to challenges you are saying yes to your strength It's like um, if you say yes to challenges, you set the tone for those strengths from inside yourself to emerge and stay emerged and stay there. In Italy, we say there is a saying which is quite interesting uh, that says, if you say yes, like obey in bracket to something that the life is requesting you, you become blessed. That means you will be able to do that forever. 
So I thought that was interesting because if you say yes to challenge and you bypass your fear, that will become your expertise. And that kind of resource will be available much more than before, let's say, for you. And another art is the art of mastering the mind. Once in a class, the teacher asked the students, why do we have brakes in our car? And the student replied, sir, to stop the car, or to avoid collision, or to reduce the speed. Uh, so you, you, know, you avoid fines. But the many answer like that, but the teacher said, no, the brakes are in the car because enables are to run faster. No, to make it run faster. So knowing there are good brakes in the car, give me the courage to drive the car faster. So knowing that I can run faster, uh, because I have good brakes is also working for the mind. I can think a lot, but if I have a good brakes, that means a strong will. I can stop when I want. So it becomes an incredible balance of thinking deeply, thinking a lot, producing, elaborating, at the same time, stillness and silence and uh, willpower, which is the way to master in my mind, is very much connected with being coherent with my principle. If I'm very much aligned with my principle, then I will um, implement my willpower and I will become much more resilient much more determined and much more courageous. And in spite of those virtues, resilience, determination, courage, willpower, I think that courage is embedded in every single virtue, like um, tolerance is the courage to accept diversity or patience, is the courage to stop and wait with trust. Detachment is the courage to believe that you are naturally a free bird, free to fly, free to get detached from everything else. Appreciation is the courage to respect people's idea and to choose the best one whoever that belongs to. Compassion is the courage to develop an eye for spotting the qualities that make each one, each soul very special. Or honesty is the courage to say no, to, fall, to false prestige or bribes and to hold tight to your integrity. Simplicity is the courage to be you, like a seed that looks ordinary, but grows into wonders. And so on, you know, courage is embedded in every virtue, in a percentage. But uh, the greatest courage is within the art of meditating the practice of elevated thought that builds enthusiasm, sustain the vision of my destination, get me closer to my own consciousness and the best part of myself. So maybe you can try a meditation now that might help me to discover the missing relationship, which is the relationship with God. So let's have a few minutes meditation and enjoy the journey within. 
Breathe to relax. Take a few moments for you. Turn within to reconnect with yourself, to discover your inner world, to get in touch with the dimension of silence within, to reconnect with the source of eternal peace. Let go of the outside world for a moment. Of everything you can feel and see, just be you, peaceful, loving, with no worries, no fears, no concerns. Feel the courage in yourself. The courage has been there since ever, eternally there. No worries about the future. The deepest strength inside you is there. Nothing to run after. Set yourself on the seat on your self-respect and everything will come to you. Nothing to run after. Be seated on the seat of your self-respect and everything will come to you. No burden, no darkness, just the light of your real self and the light of the divine. Feel the lightness of yourself. Feel the warmth of his light on you, for you. Profound silence, immense love. There is only peace upon peace. Move into this universal space a world of light beyond. Where you encounter the most powerful being, the supreme source of love. Waves of love overflows. A new you emerges from this experience. A new vision of yourself. A new experience of you being light. A new experience of the light. All this feeling for a while and deep changes within are ready to show their wonders. Om Shanti. Thank you.
Thank you, Antonella. That was a really very beautiful session and a very powerful meditation experience. And I've written down a few things for myself. And what I really liked is the example you gave of the story of Robert de Bruce when he was hiding in that cave, observing that spider that never mm -hmm. gave up and finally succeeded. And that was such a lesson for him to go back into the battle and then finally mm -hmm. won. So beautiful, but also the expression I never heard, I never heard that before, that if you say yes to the challenge, your Italian expression, then it means that you're being blessed rather than giving up, you say yes. So it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thanks everyone for joining us today. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Uh, thank you to the technical team. And our next 1.1 session will be on Friday, 28th of April. And we will have Amy Trevedi from Australia joining us. And the topic for that session will be a journey towards the oasis of stillness and calm within. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a very nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Om Shanti. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Antonella.